How's it going, everyone? Maryland here! That's right, it's time for more of the Pokemon Sword and Shield walkthrough. So, now that we've cleared Route 6, it's time to check out Stowon Side. Now, what you see right there, that'll be a little different if you're playing Pokemon Shield instead. Because this is the first instance where the gyms will change. If you're playing Pokemon Shield, you'll actually have to fight against a Ghost-type gym instead. If you're playing Pokemon Sword, then it's a Fighting-type gym. Now, that's not going to be in this video, but you will notice a little bit of a difference there. So, anyway, let's go to the Pokemon Center because healing is a good thing, but rather than bore you with that, let's talk to this guy here. Hey, I have tons of good stuff! I'll share some with you! Two fossilized birds! So, yeah... He'll give you, um, different fossilized things. If you remember Carolus from the last video, the last route, Route 6, you can take these to, uh, to Carolus to revive something. For instance, I have this lovely Arctazult right here. <laughs> uh, you get two fossilized drakes instead of fossilized birds if you're playing Pokemon Shield. So that's, again, another difference between the two. A minor difference, but a difference nonetheless. So, I'm gonna heal up. I lied. I guess I will bore you with this. But that's okay. Um, let's move ahead. And see what else is going on. Oh yeah, so this is something that happened since the update announcing the DLC for Pokémon. You may be able to see a rare Pokémon at Wedgehurst Station now. So, if you want to get Galarian Slowpoke, you can go over there and get it. Uh, I'm not going to do it in this. You also may notice that in the bottom right corner, there is a, uh, well, I have it disabled right now, but there should be a little thing telling you about the DLC. You can get rid of it if you just press in on the right control stick, if you're playing on a Pro Controller, or the right Joy-Con stick if you're playing handheld or with the right Joy-Con. And that'll just hide it if you don't want to see it, so that's why it isn't there. But yeah, they do give you a little bit of a notice about that. Okay, so these two shops here, there's a lot of shops and just kind of random stuff around uh, still on side. There's also a lot of Maractus, so if you like Maractus, well, there you go. So this person here sells a variety of different items, and it's from a rotating pool. It changes each day. So in this case, I could buy black glasses for 3,000 Poke dollars. That's not really that great, but, you know, I could use a second pair. But if I check back tomorrow, he'll actually tell me what item he's going to stock tomorrow. In this case, it's going to be charcoal. You can get some good items that are used for evolution this way, such as uh, Reaper Claws, I think Razor Claws. I've seen quite a few different things. So he sells various things. You want to check back every day. It's not really very expensive, the things that he sells, so it's probably a good idea just to buy it anyhow. So the, the fellow next to him, he's kind of the opposite. He wants to buy something from you each day, and he'll give you a much higher rate than you'd get for selling the item in the store. So in this case, he wants to buy a ball mushroom for 20,000 Poké Dollars. So that being said, whenever you have something that he wants to buy, definitely sell it, because the things that he wants to buy have no use other than being sold. So what I would personally recommend doing when you're selling a lot of the items you get in, let's say, like the wild area, like, uh... Oh, actually, there's a dedicated treasures pocket. Keep at least one of each item. So, like, I want to keep a, a big pearl, let's say, or keep one balm mushroom just in case that's the item that he wants to buy each day. You can sell all the rest, it's probably fine. Hold on to, like, your fossilized stuff. But that's what I do. You could keep two if you really wanted, but it's not, like, you know, substantially more in the big picture. It's definitely a little bit more, but, you know. All right, so there's kind of a lot going on in town. It's not really that exciting of a town. Uh, it's kind of neat looking. There's a few people you can talk to, although I don't think anyone's that important. However, there are a lot of items that you can pick up here. So down this ladder, if you go down here, you'll find some traffic cones. You'll also find three rare bones, which these can be sold for some money. You can find them over by those sacks there. 
And then there is a Rocky Helmet. This is a very useful held item that you can give your Pokemon. Whenever the Pokemon is struck by a contact move, like a direct contact move, these are usually physical based moves, but yeah, whenever it's damaged by a contact move, the attacker takes quite a bit of damage as well. It's a pretty substantial amount. It's a good item to put on bulkier Pokemon. So I strongly recommend that. It's very helpful. Very helpful indeed. Now, there's also a few other things you can find. So back here, it doesn't really look like you can go back there, right? But yep, you can. There are some Diglett. No, this is not a Doug Trio. It's just a trio of Diglett. Get it straight. <laughs> I think that's kind of funny, actually. And then there's this ladder here that you can climb up. Oh no, why can't I just crawl up there and get it? Oh, I don't know. It's fine though. So up here, there's a dude. Hey there, you happen to catch a lot of Maractus? How about trading one for my Hatena? So if you're playing Pokemon Sword, he'll offer to trade a Maractus for a Hatena, which, you know, that's not a terrible deal. Hatena are a little on the rarer side. However, if you're playing Pokemon Shield, He'll instead offer to trade you a Maractus for an Impidim. So that's kind of a difference. They're not version exclusive or anything. It's just a little bit of a difference. So since I have a Maractus, which you can get plenty of them over on Route 6, I'm going to go ahead and make the trade. Fringe. <laughs> okay, there's a name. All right, what a great trade, a give and take between trainers. Be sure to pick up the metal coat right next to him. That's a item that can be used to power up steel type Pokemon's moves, or rather steel type moves in general. It doesn't have to be on a steel type Pokemon. Plus you can also equip it on an Onix and then trade it and it'll evolve into Steelix when you trade. It does consume the item though. So over here is TM74, Venoshock. This is a reasonably strong poison type move. It's a special base poison type move, but it does double damage if the foe is already poisoned. It's nice to put on anything that has like toxic spikes, for instance. So you can use that and then be pretty much guaranteed that you'll hit for full damage. All right, so that's uh, that's kind of the main draw over here. There are two hidden special or X special attacks over here that you can pick up. But uh, there's also a fight against a certain someone right ahead. Let's get him out of the way. Although you might notice he's kind of not feeling himself. Maryland. I'm still not too sure what I should do about all that stuff I told you before. About me being weak and dragging down Lee's good name and all, yeah? But the only thing I can do is get stronger, right? So I'm going to try out all kinds of different things against you and see what works. You're on! You could say wait a second if you need to go back and heal. Then let's do this! I bet an all-out battle with my true rival will help me get my head on straight. So, there's something really important with this fight. Don't expect him to use that darn <laughs> Wooloo he's been using. I went into it thinking he did the first time I fought him, and surprise! He's mixed up his team by quite a bit. So, he has Cramorant here. All I'm after is victory, and I'm counting on you to help me grab it. Yeah, this thing, it's a water flying type. So, it's definitely uh, not something you want to be using a fighting type against like I might have. Uh, I wish I had a stronger electric type move for you. I guess Thundershock's still going to be a good option here. It's such a silly looking bird, too. Who wouldn't aim for a super effective hit if they had the chance, right? Oh yes, of course. And he's going to heal. But I should do enough to take it out, nonetheless. There we go. Alright, next up is Silicobra. Hmm. 
I think I should probably switch out, although I guess Ice Beam would be effective. Sure, you know what? Let's leave you out. It's a bit of a gamble. Ground being effective against me, but I think this will be fine. All right, Ice Beam. Achoo! <laughs> I just love how silly our Desult looks. And the Wacky. Well, that's also something that works pretty well here. Now, of course, this depends on which starter Pokemon you chose. You probably don't need me to explain it at this point anymore, but yeah, because I chose um, Scorabunny, he'll be using the Wacky here. But thankfully, I can just sneeze some ice on him, and it's not a problem at all. Okay, but it doesn't end there. Nope, he has another new Pokemon on his team. It's Toxel! Yep, an electric poison type. Not overly threatening. Uh, I actually don't really have like any ground moves. I guess I have Orb Beetle. We can use Confusion, oh boy. I don't know what I can do to try to win now, but all I can do is try. There's nothing else to it. Uh, yeah, you're gonna be trying a little too hard here. <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and use Confusion against this thing. Thankfully, it hasn't evolved yet, so it's not overly strong. Poor Hop. He just gets destroyed by Bead, and that definitely does something to your ego. <laughs> and then he just gets destroyed by me as well. When he switches out his team, but oh well. My strategy goes right to pot when I've got all these bad thoughts running through my head. Sorry, pal. Um, I tried switching my team members in and out to max out their potential in every matchup, but we just couldn't get it together somehow. Maybe that's why I'm still so weak. But Lee really is the greatest trainer, and I don't want people to be laughing at him all because his little brother is rubbish. It's not enough! I've got to try harder, and harder and harder till no one's laughing! I'm off, mate. Off to find the kind of Pokemon that I can really draw the strength out of. Yeah, so he's kind of going through a bit of a mid-trainer crisis, if you will. That child. Chim challengers should battle for the sake of their own Pokemon. Why worry about saving the champion's name? We all know he's unbeatable. Anyway, here's something for letting me watch your battle. It's B's lead card! Or, if you're playing Pokemon Shield, she'll give you Alistair's lead card instead. Now, on you go, child. You're headed to the Stoan side gym next, no? The gym challenge is about having fun. Mm hmm, I see. Well, that's not exactly my next destination, but it's close. So, I am going to be climbing up these stairs, but it's actually this little house here that I want to climb up. Because, hiding over here, there's a cracked pot. So you can use this thing to evolve most... Uh, what is it? Um... Poltygeist? It's not Poltygeist, uh... Sinistee, that's what it is. Which I don't believe we have seen yet in this game but we'll be able to soon. So there's also two Diglett over there, right? <laughs> a Dig Duo? Something like that. Anyway, you can jump down those crates if you really want. So that's basically it as far as Stow on side. I mean, there are some houses that you can go to. There's this area over here that you could check out, but there's nothing that exciting right now, and you're going to be going that way anyway. However, something I should note you can go over here to the next area. This is somewhere that you'll visit after clearing the gym, but you can actually check it out now in case you want to get some of the Pokemon here. This is Glimwood Tangle, and even though it looks like you can't proceed, you can't drown us out, mate. We'll just turn the volume up. Money! That spells victory to me! With the knick-knack, paddywhack, give a growl a bone Marty's gonna send you home. I think you need to work on your rhymes. So you can't actually proceed just yet. However, <laughs> you can uh, encounter Impidimp right here by touching that mushroom and illuminating things. 
Impidimp, of course, being a dark fairy type Pokemon. I already have one from earlier though, but this might be your first chance to get one if you weren't exploring the wild area. So that's pretty cool. You can also find uh, random encounters here. So there's a few interesting things. They are mostly very strong though. You can't catch most of them. You can only catch things up to level 35. However, there are some things here that are level 35. Nothing will spawn on the overworld though. The only times you can really have like those special encounters are with, I think, Impidimp and maybe, maybe something else later on. But this is still a decent place to go if you are looking for some new Pokemon. You can go here early. You just might not be able to catch everything. There's some things you can, some things you can't. But I figured I'd point that along because it's like two patches of grass in there, but that's all you really need. So this is how it's going to go. There are actually going to be two Stow on Side Gym Leader Battle videos because it changes based on whether you are playing Pokemon Sword or Pokemon Shield. For so for the next video, just be sure you are watching the the proper one. I have recorded both. I've recorded this on my Shield playthrough, which was my first impression of it. And I will, of course, be playing through it on this as well. So just which, whichever video you want to watch, feel free to. You'd probably want to watch the Sword one if you're following along playing Pokemon Sword or just following along with the series. Otherwise, if you're playing Pokemon Shield and you want to know what's up ahead, make sure you watch the one for Alistair, Gym Leader Alistair, because that is the gym for you. But anyway, we're going to tackle those gyms in the next two episodes, split into two different ones. I'll see you next time, everyone. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my YouTube channel, and turn on notifications to get updated. Be sure to check out my website for more Pokemon Sword and Shield coverage, including a full mobile-friendly Pokedex, a powerful team builder, and a written walkthrough. See you next time!